Metabolic acidosis result from decrease of bicarb level in the serum, right? ECF. And that can happen from the following. Either addition of acid, whether endogenous or exogenous. And this usually leads to increase anion gap because you're adding an acid, addition of acid, addition of hydrogen ions, as we explained in the anion gap episode or video or can result from inability to secrete hydrogen ion or inability to keep bicarb uh, in, by the kidney or bicarb absorption by the kidney or reabsorption or loss of bicarb through extrarenal through GI. Big example, diarrhea. And big example here of loss of bicarb through the kidney, RTA type 2, the proximal tubule, and inability to secrete or get rid of hydrogen ion, you have RTA type 1 and type 4. Okay, so here the inability for the kidney to keep bicarb or loss of bicarb whether renally or extrarenally and the inability to get rid of each hydrogen ion leads to all of this normal anion gap. As you can tell now, adding hydrogen ion or acids whether endogenous like ketones like ketoacidosis, DKA or alcoholic ketoacidosis or lactic acid, right? And you can add this to salicylate overdose because salicylate does not cause acidosis directly by the salicylate itself, but by increasing the production of ketones and lactic acid or exogenous by ingestion, just like ethylene glycol, methanol, um, isopropyl glycol, paraldehyde, etc. can cause that. So addition of hydrogen ion or acids lead to increase anion gap while inability to get rid of hydrogen ion or loss of bicarb through the kidney or GI can lead to leads to normal anion gap. So that's the first rule. And based on this, you can tell the causes. We already mentioned possible causes of increase anion gap acidosis and normal anion gap and you don't have to memorize now if you know these rules you can just apply are we adding acids producing acids or we are losing bicarb and inability to get rid of hydrogen ion means we're losing bicarb right as we just explained that's why measuring anion gap is essential right now when there is if there is increased anion gap and if it's possible to is calculate something called a smaller gap and i explained a small gap in my hyponatremia uh, video series um, i'll put a link in the description but the smaller gap means the difference between major osmolality minus calculated osmolality as you know calculated osmolality is contributed to by the sodium um, glucose and urea bun so if there is if the major osmolality bigger than the calculated osmolality indicate there is some other molecules contributing to osmolality other than sodium glucose and urea and these are usually anything that has ethanol can cause that ethanol glycol ethanol ethanol itself so which makes the differential narrower if you uh, calculate an anion gap it's increase and you calculate a smaller gap will make much easier along with the history and physical exam to figure out cause of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. Regarding normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, as we just mentioned, these are from anything that's not related to production of acids, um, usually normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Usually this is loss of bicarb, whether by kidney or GI, like diarrhea here and RTAs here, right? And loss of bicarb can be by direct loss, like RTA type 2, the proximal tube we explain that or by inability inability to secrete hydrogen ion like RTA type 1 and 4 and we just explained that also there is something called dilutional acidosis so when you give normal saline or lactate to drink but mainly normal saline I'll explain in a second you increase ECF size and you're not giving bicarb so increasing ECF size with along with constant HCO3 amount this will lead to decrease HCO3 concentration and will lead to this dilutional acidosis. And this is the main explanation why we see sometimes acidosis with normal saline, right? Lactate drinker or balanced solutions like lactate drinker, they have some bicarb directly or indirectly. Indirectly, the lactate and the lactate drinker will be converted by the liver to bicarb. And you can go back to my IV fluid solution video series. Uh, we explained that there. Okay. So 
That's about dilution acidosis and usually it's normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So if you're having issue here, the solution is, 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 is simple. You can just, if it's really bothering and the bicarb is going low, you can add bicarb to the solution to fix. You just increase the amount of bicarb or you stop the fluids and that will go back. The ECF size will go back to normal and the, the bicarb concentration will improve. As simple as that. Okay. Let's move and start talking about treatments. Treatment of metabolic acidosis. Here we're just going to talk about general guidelines and rules. We're not going to go into details of every cause of acidosis. The question, big question, and I explained that in my IV fluid course when I talked. We have three, four videos talking just about bicarb drip. So I'll put a link in the description as well. Is when to give bicarb or not. That's the first rule. Uh, the first things that we need to talk about. Just remember that there is some acids are potential bicarb that's when things improve these products will be converted by the body into bicarb big example lactate and remember lactate ringer we said that lactate converted to bicarb by the liver also ketones so these when you correct things lactate lactic acid and ketones can be converted to bicarb so be careful if you're going to give bicarb you may um, lead well, along with this lead to metabolic overshoot alkalosis right so this is really important. But when you're dealing with life-threatening situation, life-threatening severe acidosis, then nobody will blame you if you're going to give bicarb as a temporizing measure. Whether you're dealing with DKA, lactic acids, lactic acidosis. So severe acidosis, usually pH less than 7.1. And again, there are some more details I talked about it on when I talked about the bicarb drips. If there is a patient in a shock and a acute kidney injury, this 7.3 usually the, the target uh, to keep it above. If, if, it low, if it goes below 7.3, you give bicarb if there is associated acute kidney injury. So, so you can go ahead and give because severe acidosis can kill the patient in minutes. The patient will be profoundly hypotensive, stop responding to vasopressors. You will see the patient requiring more and more vasopressors and the, the nurse is telling you he's just more and more hypotensive. You may start seeing the QRS complex and the monitor going wide because there is associated hyperkalemia. And if you don't act quickly, the patient will die. So the fastest way is to give bicarb with our pushes or and drip. And I talked about that in the bicarb videos in my IV fluid course. So you can check that. Also, treating underlying problem, right? That's the most important uh, step of treatment. Whether you're treating DKA, um, the shock, whatever causing the shock, you know, giving some uh, dextrose to people, alcoholic ketosis. And of course, for the, with the toxins, uh, you may need dialysis like methanol ingestion, ethanol, ethanol glycol. In salicylate, you can give uh, also bicarb to alkalinize the urine, all of this. So this is the general rule. Don't jump to bicarb unless you're dealing with severe acidosis as a temporizing measure. Now, this discussion here, when I say this apply for increased anion gap metabolic acidosis, when we, the, 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 the temporizing effect of bicarb and the use with severe acidosis are trying to treat the underlying problem. Now, when we move and talk about normal anion gap acidosis, so there is loss, there is deficits in the bicarb. So it makes sense when you give bicarb, it will fix the problem, right? But here, if you can treat the underlying problem, treat it like diarrhea, right? If you can stop diarrhea, then good, you don't need to give bicarb. Dilutional acidosis. If you stop the fluids, it will correct itself. But if the loss of bicarb here, severe acidosis here really significant, you can add bicarb to fluid, bicarb drip, for example. So it makes sense because there is bicarb deficit in normal anion gap acids. Well, here there is production of acids. So the bicarb will have only temporizing effect. Remember that. Now in RTAs and in chronic kidney disease, you may need to use oral bicarb. And of course, with RTAs, type 1, type 2 in the proximal tubule, type 1, and type 4 in the distal tubule, you may need to use oral bicarb, as we said, and treat underlying problem that led to the, if possible, lead to the uh, these RTAs. Uh, uh, CKDs can lead to acidosis when there is a significant drop in the GFR, usually less, usually less than 20%. You may need to use oral bicarbs. So these are the general rule. Remember, acid base disturbance is usually a manifestation, a sign of an underlying problem. So always think of the underlying problem and treat it. 
again for increased anion gap metabolic acidosis usually bicarb is a temporizing measure with severe acidosis until you fix the underlying problem whether dialyzing patients giving antidote giving fluids giving insulin drip you know giving dextrose whatever the cause is and for normal anion gap metabolic acidosis there is bicarb loss and bicarb would work but we recommend if something you can uh, fix and the bicarb will correct itself on its own do it like treating diarrhea dilution acidosis otherwise you may need to give also on a chronic basis some oral bicarb therapy that's all for metabolic acidosis for now